Thank you very much. I knew you'd love that tune. Now I'm going to just finish up my little segment here. I'm going to call back my friend very soon. But I'm going to put some, a whole bunch of impressions into this next song. Because some people have never recorded this song before. This is one of the great songs of variety show business. This was probably the best version of this was by a guy called Bobby Darren. I, I worked with Bobby Rydell once. You remember Bobby Rydell? He's coming, he's coming to uh, Australia next month and it could be here. Come and see him. He's a great act, great act. And uh, they used to all go to the Copacabana and go to see Bobby Darren. Sammy used to go watch him. Frank used to go watch it. And the funny thing was that Bobby Darren wanted to be Sammy, wanted to be Frank, wanted to be Dean. They all come and watch Dean Martin, Elvis Presley, you name it, all of them. But Bobby Darren had the definitive version of this particular song, which is Mac the Knife. And I'm a Mac, Mac master. And uh, so I figured, that, yeah, we, but to, how do I make this song a little bit different from Bobby because I can't possibly compete. So I figured that Sammy could sing this, Richie Benno, <laughs> Jerry Lewis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Maxwell Smart, and Bill Clinton. Let's see how they handle Mac the Knife. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, the shark bait has such teeth, dear, and it shows them, shows them pearly white paste, baby. Just a jackknife has old Mac heat, baby. Oh, so he keeps it, mm, he keeps it. Out of sight, Richie Benno. You know when that shark bites with his teeth, there are two sets of teeth. Chew, 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 chew sets of teeth. And I'm sure that uh, he'll be welcome back. <laughs> I have no idea what the bloody words are, of course. But then again, I'm not supposed to. I'm not a bloody singer. Two for 22. Thank you very much. Jerry Lewis. Now on the sidewalk, oh, Sunday morning, uh-huh. Just oozing wipe and somebody sneaking around the corner. Wow, well, could that someone be Mac tonight? Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's a taco. He's down by the river, don't you know? He's not a tumor, not a tumor. You know, <laughs> this cement bag is just a drooping arm down. Oh, yeah, and that cement is just. He's there for the wait, baby. Five will get you ten. Old Mackie, he's coming back to town. Hasta la vista. I'll be back, baby. Maxwell Smart. I'm just here by the Louis Melichick. While well, it seemed like he withdrew out all of his hard-earned cash, went down by the dock, streaking with some rough chaos agents. I've been trailing him now for about three days, and I keep missing him by that much. And loving it. Bill Clinton. I said, Miss Jenny Diver, uh, Miss Suki Tawdry, Miss Lottie Lenya, Miss Lucy Brown, uh, Miss uh, Jennifer Flowers, uh, Monica Lewinsky, Pauline Hansen, maybe even Bronwyn Bishop, I'm not sure. I said, Jenny Diver, oh, Suki Tawdry, look out for Miss Lottie Lenya. And oh, Lucy Brown, yes, that line forms on the right. Babe, now that Maggie is back in a towel. Look out, old Mac is back, baby. Thank you very much, baby. Please welcome back to the stage my good friend, Mr. Phil Emanuel. Here he comes. You know what that music is, don't you, Dr. Phil? I love it when Dr. Phil comes on the TV and turns to a woman and goes, what part of when he hit you did you not understand?
Now, I saw you having a little trouble with your guitar there before, you know? It's just like a relationship. It's just like a relationship. You've got to have a relationship with your guitar <laughs> like you do with anything else upon your person. <laughs> if you have something upon your person, you should have a relationship with it. <laughs> a good relationship. But you see, you know, there are rules that men wish women knew. There are. There are rules that men wish women knew. First one is, if the toilet seat's up, put it down. It don't weigh much. You're a big girl. <laughs> Here's a very, very important rule that women should learn. If you don't want the genie to come out, don't rub the lamp. And last but not least, girls, here's an important rule. If we ask you what is wrong and you say nothing, we will act like nothing is wrong. <laughs> it's as simple as that. We're men. We're dumb. We do that. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Did you see, did you see that... Uh, about a week ago where the, the Australian woman was on the flight, the Delta Airlines flight in America, and she, she got uh, talked to by the security for saying fair dinkum. Remember that one? You know, she's on the plane, she asked for more pretzels, and they said, we don't have any more pretzels. And she goes, well, can I buy some? And they said, no. And she said, was that the service there is on this plane? And they go, yeah. And she goes, oh, fair dinkum. And the stewardess walks away. Ten minutes later, it comes down the, the head stewardess, or flight attendant, and says, uh, you're going to be talked to on the ground by the security forces because you swore at my flight stewardess. And she said, well, what did I say? He said, well, you, something. I don't know what it was, but you must have said something. I don't know what you said, but you said something. <laughs> and they said, because they don't understand what fair income was, right? So she gets on the ground. 40 minutes she was held by the security forces, right? And, I, I'm, I'm, and they, she was threatened with deportation. She was threatened with arrest. And I imagine they're trying to figure out what she said. So they'd have to bring in the top interrogator from CSI Miami, Horatio. things to do, like walk around like this all day. What the hell does fair dinkum mean? Well, it's not swearing. It means, is that right? Is it the truth? Really? Yes. If I wanted to swear, I would have given you some fair income Australian swear words. Like, gone. Garn? Yeah, gone. You know what's coming next, don't you? <laughs> gone, get fair income. you in a different way from now on. It's funny, you still look the same to me. 